Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, the Security Council adopted a UK-drafted resolution on ISIL and ANF in Iraq and Syria. As you heard me say just now in my explanation of vote in the chamber, this resolution does four things. It sends a strong and clear political message to the terrorists and those who support them. Secondly, it focuses on important practical measures, choking off recruitment and, in particular, the supply of foreign fighters. And thirdly, it tackles the funding and financing of these terrorist groups. And lastly, it applies sanctions to six individual terrorists and their key financial backers. The Chapter 7 resolution forms part of a wider humanitarian and military response to the crisis in Iraq, and it lays the foundation for addressing the longer-term threat posed by ISIL and ANF. We're, I welcome the broad agreement of the Council in taking these steps, and I'm pleased that we could reassure Council members of the need to take such measures quickly. And can I add in my national capacity that we heard the Syrian representative blaming others for the rise of terrorism in Syria. But the reality is that it is Assad who is in large part the cause of terrorism. He is certainly not the solution to it. By brutally suppressing its population and stoking sectarian tensions, the Syrian regime has created conditions conducive to the growth of terrorism. It has made Syria a magnet for terrorists, and its actions remain al-Qaeda's best recruiting tool. Thank you. Please. Uh, Ambassador, um, now ISIL and al-Nusra Front are not necessarily following what's going on at the, the UN, and they may not particularly care what's going on here. What do you think will be the real-world impact of this resolution? How will these measures uh, affect things on the ground, or will they? Or is it a kind of symbolic thing, as you said, a, a strong signal, a strong message? No, no, it's a lot more than uh, a strong message. There are some practical steps here which member states are expected to implement in terms of cutting off, choking off from the outside, completely isolating these terrorist groups. And it also tackles six key individuals. Now, these are not individuals that are all in Iraq. Some of these individuals are outside Iraq, financing the terrorist organizations. Two from ISIL, four uh, very closely associated with ANF, all of them linked to Al Qaeda. So this resolution will have an impact, a real impact, on the ability of these uh, groups to uh, increase their influence and uh, threaten uh, the region. There was a mention made of, of, uh, by a number of the speeches of cutting down on travel and the use of social media. I just wonder, one, are there any kind of limits on this in terms of, is it, is it illegal for someone to say that they, you know, think that, that the Iraq, uh, uh, politics in Iraq have been too sectarian? Where, where, where does that line get drawn? And also, one of the representatives said, this does not authorize military op operations at all. And I wanted to know if you, do you, if you agree with that, despite it being under Chapter 7. It is a Chapter 7 resolution. Uh, no, it doesn't authorize uh, military action. There is no need for a resolution to authorize military action. Uh, the action that's been taken so far is uh, at the request of the uh, Iraqi government. Um, on the wider point, we are not suggesting that this resolution is going to immediately, dramatically change the situation on the ground. There are a number of elements in it that will need to be worked through uh, with member states, but it is a first step towards establishing a longer-term uh, international framework for tackling this major threat that has arisen. Please. How is this resolution going to tackle the ideological edicts which are passed by so many clerics and aired on air on many televisions in the Gulf, as has been mentioned? How are they, these will be made responsible for their edicts? Well, it is the responsibility primarily of national governments, of course, to uh, implement this resolution. And they need to make sure that there is legislation in place in their own governments which can tackle the incitement to terrorism. In the United Kingdom, we have a very elaborate anti-terrorist legislative framework which prevents 
clerics of any sort inciting uh, terrorist acts, supporting terrorism, uh, inciting violence. And we would encourage, and this resolution makes calls on member states, to take similar steps that have been taken in many of our countries. So, so the Security Council will not be handling such things as well. I mean, the sale of, of oil through mediators, how are you going to uh, watch that? Because that's, in a way, financing terrorism, isn't it? Absolutely. It's been very clear that there should be no sale, export, uh, of any assets that could support ISIL or ANF or Al-Qaeda. That is very clear in this resolution, and member states have a binding obligation under Chapter 7 to prevent that happening. Ambassador, um, in view of the fact that terrorism is now so hugely cross-border, how will this resolution control it or curtail it? I mean, it's, it's almost global by this point. Well, it is certainly true that ISIL is trying to establish territory across borders uh, in Syria and, and Iraq. But that is why this resolution is not country specific. It is ISIL and ANF specific. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, one last question. Go on. I was, I was just going to ask about the impact of this resolution, given that ISIS seems to be so well funded, given its control of the oil fields, given its plundering of the central bank given the extortion rackets that it operates in the areas that it controls? Well, there's been some talk uh, in the press that ISIL is now self-funding in some way. That is not true. Yes, they may have control of the oil fields. They've still got to sell the oil. Yes, they have plundered the banks, and they may have some short-term uh, resources at their disposal. But they cannot survive independent of the outside world. And if that support from the outside world can be choked off, then this organization will not have the resources to continue its activities. And that is partly the aim of this resolution. Thank you very much.